This story took place during that weird clown pandemic that happened a few years back. I was in my senior year of high school, and my buddy Trevor and I had just scored jobs at a local haunted hayride attraction. It was the perfect job for us. We were both 16 and 17, and we were getting paid to scare people. Pretty cool, right? Where we worked had a ton of different scenes, as we called them. There was a scene of banshees, a crazed woodsman, a butcher, a presidential bloodbath, some clowns, and a bunch of others. So what were Trevor and I, you may ask? Well, with us being about 5'10 and 130 pounds soaking wet, there wasn't very many intimidating things that we could dress up as. It didn't help our case that we were both handed green morph suits and were set to be aliens. But they actually organized our scenes very well. There was a button on the roadway, and when the hayride drove over it, it would activate noises on one side of the ride, and on the opposite side, we would jump out and scream. This formula was actually very effective. We started in August, and we were supposed to go to the first week of November. Early on, it wasn't super active. We would scare a ride, and have up to 10 minutes until the next ride came through. So we had time to move around, and talk to other scenes and make some friends. When October rolled around, there were four rides running constantly, and there was no brakes. On a Saturday in mid-October, everything was running smoothly. It was about 1 a.m., so the frequency of the hayrides were slowing down a bit. At the time, there was two hayrides running, so we did have some excess time in between. In between one of the rides, me and Trevor were out where we kept our bags. We were grabbing a drink of Mountain Dew. Then, we heard some noises to our left, where the hayride normally comes from. But it wasn't the normal noise. It was footsteps. Loud footsteps. We looked out, and there was three clowns. For a few seconds, me and Trevor had no reaction. They were just the guys in the clown scene. I thought, maybe they went to the front to grab some food, and were walking through the trail to get back to their scene. But after a few seconds, I realized, these were not the clowns that we had seen before. I quickly looked over to Trevor, and I could tell that he was thinking the same thing. We had to act fast. If they made to fight us, they would most likely win. If we tried to run, they would probably catch us. So, thinking on my toes, I decided to try and act like they were the guys that we knew. I looked at one and said, Hey guys, how'd you end up over here? To which one of them replied in a really high clown voice, Oh, we're just strolling through. <laughs> and they kept walking along. But quite clearly, they were now walking slower than before. Upon noticing this, I got a very creeped out feeling. Just in the nick of time, the horn sounded from the hayride. I could tell it was about a ride's length away. So I looked back at the clowns and said, You guys better hurry back. The hayride is coming, and you still have a way to go. And to my surprise, they sped up and kept walking down the path. Trevor and I didn't want to make a scene when the hayride came through, just in case we were mistaken about the clowns. So we went to our normal positions and scared the ride. After the ride left, we just kind of paced around nervously, hoping that the clowns that we saw weren't waiting for the ride to leave. We just hung out at our scene for another 20 minutes, with no other ride showing. It was probably the longest 20 minutes of my life. Then we saw headlights coming down the trail. It was one of the managers and two cops on a golf cart. They stopped quickly, and the manager leans over and says, uh, Hey guys, no more rides tonight. Grab your stuff and head down the trail towards the start. And you drive home safe, okay? Relieved, Trevor and I quickly grabbed our stuff and booked it down the trail and went home. The next day, I woke up to a text from my manager. It was a big group chat, so it wasn't addressed just to me. It read, Hey everyone, I really hate to have to send this text out. Unfortunately, the hayride is going to be closing for the season. I want to thank all of you for coming out to work with us. Send me privately your address so I can send all of you your last paychecks. This was strange. It was only mid-October, not even Halloween yet, which was the biggest night for the hayride. Confused, I texted Trevor 
to see if he knew anything about what was going on. He replied, You didn't hear? The guys at the clown scene were found dead by the last hayride. I'm an 18 year old male and I live in San Jose, California. My family is bigger than most. I have three siblings, two older sisters and one older brother, and we live in a three bedroom single story house along with our parents. My parents sleep in one room and my sisters in the other. So me and my brother have had to share a room ever since I outgrew my crib. This happened when I was 12. My brother had just gotten engaged and was moving out to an apartment complex in Melpitas, California. My sisters had gone out to drink and my dad was helping my brother and his fiance move into their new place. So it was just me and my mom. It was around one o'clock in the morning and I had been watching some videos on YouTube. I heard my parents' bedroom door open, so I figured my mom was going out to see if I was sleeping yet. So I turned off my phone and acted like I was sleeping so that she wouldn't take away my phone. So I just laid there for a little while. After a couple of minutes, I heard my bedroom door open. So I did my best to act like I was sleeping. I thought my mom would see me laying there and just go back to bed. However, my door didn't close and I had the feeling that my mom was standing over me. I felt someone grab my leg and pull me off the bed. I immediately got up thinking my mom was messing with me, but there was no one there. I called out for my mom, but I got no response. I left my room to find out where my mom was hiding, but she was sleeping in her bed. I was a little creeped out, but for some reason I still thought she was just messing with me. So I went back to bed and I didn't think any more of it. A couple of days later, my dad and brother have finished putting the couches and dressers in their new place and invited the rest of the family to come and see. It was around 10.30 p.m. when my dad called for us to come over. It was pretty late, but I wanted to go. But since it was a Wednesday, my parents told me that I had to stay home and get some sleep before school the next day. I was a little frustrated but they told me that I could go on the weekend to see my brother's apartment. So I didn't argue with them. After they left, I decided that I should get ready for bed. I brushed my teeth and settled in under the covers. I watched some more gaming videos for a while on my phone before I finally drifted off. But as soon as I closed my eyes, I heard footsteps outside of my room. At first, I thought my family had come home early so I turned off my phone. A couple of minutes went by and I didn't hear any voices or noise of any kind. I was confused and then I heard my phone go off. I looked at it and saw that I had gotten a text from my dad. We're on the way back now. Should be there in 30. I felt like I had just gotten punched in the stomach. No one was home. But I knew that I had heard the sound of footsteps. And then to my horror... I heard my door open and froze. It was the same situation as a couple of nights ago. I pretended to be asleep, but this time I was terrified because if I opened my eyes, I would see some stranger standing over me. So I stayed perfectly still for what felt like an hour. I finally gathered the courage to open my eyes, but there was nothing there. I got up and turned on my light and looked to see if there was anyone hiding in my room or maybe hiding under my bed or in my closet, but I didn't find anyone. I waited in my room with my lights on and door closed until my parents came back. I don't know why, but I didn't tell them about what happened. I probably felt like they wouldn't believe me, so I just told them that I couldn't get to sleep. I decided to stay up for the rest of that night and just go to school tired the next day because I was simply just too frightened to go back to sleep that night. Nothing else like that has happened since, but whenever my family leaves me alone by myself, I feel like there is someone or something watching me, and that I never am truly alone.
This encounter mainly affected my sister, so the rest of the story will be written in her perspective. I was six years old getting ready for school. As one child of five, the eldest being seven and a half at the time and the youngest being only six months, it's safe to say that our flat was always hectic, with everyone getting ready at different paces. We kept our shoes in a storage meter room which we shared with our neighbor, which was located right beside our front door. I'm not sure if this is the case for most newly built London flats, but at the time, this was the case for us. To fully grasp this story, you must know the layout of our flat. Unlike most flats, we had an inside corridor which allowed the residents to access their homes in the building, and you could only gain access to this corridor with a key fob, or by buzzing an intercom which revealed your photo, as well as your voice. You may be wondering why we kept our shoes in the storage room. This was because we had so many shoes that my mother didn't want to keep them in the house as she was fed up with telling us young children to put them away neatly. Also, we had recently moved into this flat and our shoe rack was not assembled yet, but I digress. I was the first to get ready, which was odd. I was usually the last one to get ready and would be constantly nagged by my mom. I went to go grab my school shoes from the meter. The meter room has a light switch near the middle of the room, and it was usually cold and pitch black with a musty smell, which is why I had no apprehension about entering. I was used to it. As I pushed open the door, it seemed to bounce against something. I shrugged to myself thinking that some debris may be blocking the door, and I pushed harder. Right then, I heard a muffled noise which was quickly followed up with a hushed exchange between a man and a woman. Shh, she doesn't know. She doesn't know. It was as if I had suddenly gained night vision, because I could now see the dark outline of two strangers in the room. I stared for a good ten seconds, and then I started to panic. I didn't know what was going on. I was only six years old, so my first instinct was to get out of the room. I slammed the door shut, and yelled, Mom! Mom! There's strangers in the storage room! My mom's eyes grew wide, as she was alone with five tiny children. My mother quickly ran to the cupboard, retrieving a broomstick, and then ran to confront these strangers, who could have had malicious intent for all she knew. It's important to add here that a large homeless population used to hide and stay near our flat, as it was right beside a Tesco which is the British equivalent to Walmart. Some of these people were heavily strung out on drugs. My siblings tried to run after our mother, not knowing what was going on, thinking that it was some kind of game. My brave mother yelled at them from outside the door. I've called the police and they are on their way. You better get off of our property right now. The stranger stayed silent at first, hoping that she would just go away. She then started to barge the door, and then opened it, shaking the broomstick threateningly towards the strangers, yelling at them. Of course, she hadn't called the police. She was only bluffing, but the strangers shakily stood there with their hands up, indicating surrender. They hurried past my mother and out of our flat, leaving their dirty blanket behind. My mother must have thrown it out later, because when I returned from school, it was gone. Although it was a frightening experience, I could not wait to go to school and tell everyone about the encounter with the strangers, who I made out to be armed robbers. In reality, the only ones frightened were the strangers, who were probably just homeless people looking for shelter for the night. Nonetheless, it was breaking and entering, and my mother couldn't risk one of her children being hurt, or worse. To those strangers who snuck into our flat, next time... Do not break into a home with a fearsome mother, because I assure you, they will do anything to protect their children. Hey everyone, thank you for tuning into this episode of Based on True Events. If you enjoyed these narrations and would like your story to be featured in this series, please send in your written experience to unit522stories at outlook.com. I look forward to hearing from you. Until next time, I'm your Uncle Unit. And as always, never forget.